In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the net present value of a project when taxes are taken into consideration. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take all the cash flows of the project and we're going to convert them to an after-tax basis using the company's tax rate. Then we're going to discount all the cash flows to their present value just like you would with a normal MPV problem. So let's take this problem right here as an example. So we've got a pizzeria that pays $60,000 cash today to buy a pizza oven. And then they're going to use that oven to generate $20,000 of cash flow each of the next four years. They're going to depreciate the oven, taking $15,000 of depreciation every year. And then at the end of year four, they're going to sell the oven for $6,000. And they've got an income tax rate of 21% and then a discount rate of 8% that we'll use to find the present values. So let's work this problem. So in period zero, which is today, so period zero, we're going to have a negative $60,000 cash flow. We're going to have a cash outflow today. Okay, we're not going to have to discount that or worry about after tax or anything like that. So let's move now to period one. We're going to receive $20,000. But remember, we're going to have to pay tax on this $20,000 we're receiving. So you take $20,000 and multiply it by one minus the tax rate, which is well, one minus 21%, so times 79%. And that's going to give you $15,800. So we're going to put $15,800 here. And here's what this means. It means we received $20,000 of cash. However, we had to pay tax on that money at 21%. And so if you calculated the tax and subtracted it from the $20,000, you would get $15,800. Now we're also going to get a tax deduction for the depreciation. Now, normally in real life, depreciation would not be the same amount every single year because for tax purposes, usually you have accelerated depreciation where you take more depreciation in the early years of the asset. But to make this problem simple, we're just going to say 15000 every year for four years. So we're going to take that 15000 We need to know what is the value of that tax deduction because that deduction is going to reduce the amount of tax we have to pay. And how do we figure that out? Well, we multiply it by our tax rate, 21%. So 15,000 times 21% is $3,150. So we got $3,150. So our cash flows on an after-tax basis for the very first period, we'd have $18,950, okay? Another way of getting that, if you wanted to, you could say, okay, well, I'm just gonna take 20,000 of income that we had Subtract the five or fifteen thousand of deduction, the tax deduction of depreciation, and so then twenty thousand minus fifteen thousand would mean you'd have five thousand of taxable income. You multiply that by twenty one percent. That means you'll have to pay in the first year one thousand fifty dollars in taxes. So this would be a cash outflow for taxes. But you receive twenty thousand dollars, so twenty thousand minus the tax you pay of 1050 so it's 20,000 minus the tax you pay of 1050 that would also give you 18,950 so i'm just saying there's just there's a couple different ways to do it yeah. now but i'm just going to continue with this way we'll convert to the after tax cash flows first so for the second second year we're also going to receive $20,000 but after we multiply by 1 minus the tax rate that's $15,800 and again, we're going to have this depreciation. The re By the way, if you don't understand why I'm doing this, 15,000 times 21%, remember that although depreciation is a non-cash, like, like it doesn't, it's not like we're getting cash by depreciating an asset. What it is is, it's, is we're saying, look, look, we're getting a tax deduction of $15,000, and that's saving us where we don't have to pay $3,150 of taxes. Okay, so if you're thinking about, well, depreciation is not a cash flow, why are you doing this? It's because it's giving us a tax break and we're saving $3,150 of taxes. So again, we're going to have $18,950. And in the in period zero, I should have wrote negative 60000 So the, these here are after-tax cash flows. Remember I said that's the first step we're going to do, convert to after-tax basis. And then for the third period... We have the same thing, 15,800, 3,150, and then that gives us 18,950. The fourth year, we've got one little difference. So we've got 15,800, 
we've got 3150 but then we also have we sell the machine we have a gain of six thousand dollars that's going to be taxed so we take six thousand times one minus the tax rate so that's 79 percent so that means that we're going to get four thousand seven hundred and forty after we pay tax on that gain we're going to receive four thousand seven hundred and forty dollars so four thousand seven forty and then we'll see what we've, I've got the solution here written a little bit better because basically just and here's where we're going before I before I show you this is I can't remember it off the top of my head we're gonna discount each of these to the present value so these are the after right here this row here those are the after tax this is the after tax cash flows but now we need to discount them so we'll discount this remember our discount rate is eight percent so divided by 1.08 to the first power. Why am I doing that? Well, you take your cash flow divided by one plus the discount rate to the nth power, where n is the period. So we're going to divide this, the year two cash flows, divided by 1.08 to the second power. Here, year three, divided by 1.08 to the third power. And then here, we're going to divide by 1.08 to the fourth power. And, and let's see what the number is for that fourth column. Okay, so this number right here is 21 or 23,690 so this is 23,690 that that's the sum of this so now here are our after tax cash flows and then this we don't need to discount to the present value because it happens today it's it doesn't need to be discounted we discount this 18,950 divided by 1.08 to the first power so that comes out to 17,000 546 so this is 17 546 if you were to do that and then here this one is 16 247 and then this one is 15,043 it's just from this number right here okay and then this number here is this so 17 413 now if we add and then remember too we have the negative 60,000 that didn't need to be discounted. Now, if we take these numbers right here, these five numbers, and add them across, we get to 6,249. That is the net present value of this project. Now, because the project has a positive net present value, the NPV is greater than zero, assuming the company has the capital to do this project, they should accept the project. 